This video is about how eating sugar feeds COVID-19. Now, if you're a health conscious person and you see this, uh, the average health conscious person freaks out a little bit if they, if, if, if they eat sugar. Not all, but some, obviously. So they think if you go have a cup of ice cream, you know that, that's what I'm referring to, and that's not what I'm referring to. What I'm referring to is the fact that the average American gets 60% of their calories from these sugar, flour, and refined oil so-called foods. The average healthy person who goes out for, sneaks out maybe on a, a one day a week, this is a donut here, so they get a donut with a cup of coffee and they feel guilty about it. That's not the sugar that I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you pig out on these foods, eventually you end up with a belly that looks like this. So here's a big dose of cake in the belly. This is what I'm referring to. So, so when one achieves this level of body fat, now you can also have uh, high glucose and be normal weight. They call it uh, metabolically obese, normal weight, metabolically obese. Now, people are much more metabolically obese once they cross into being slightly overweight. There was one paper that was published several years ago that demonstrated how people who had a body mass index of about 26, 27, which is just slightly overweight, in that population, they found that up to 20% of people were metabolically obese, meaning that they had hyperglycemia. It's not that, that they just ate a, cup, you know, a cupcake once a week. That's nothing. Nothing to worry about there. So the way to look at this is to track your markers of inflammation. You can just simply go get a glucometer at the, at the drugstore and start tracking your glucose. Then you'll know where you are. So what I'm referring to in this video in terms of how sugar feeds COVID-19 and other viruses, it's, there is a twofold relationship. First, Whenever we become hyperglycemic, which means type 2 diabetes or metabolic syndrome, the higher the glucose goes, we lose phagocytic activity. So phagocytic activity is impaired. What does that mean? Well, phagocytes are white blood cells, the most notable being a macrophage, that engulfs or eats and gets rid of tissue debris after injury, dead and dying cells, as well as infected areas, infected cells, and then... Um, bacterial infections themselves. So this is what we were told back in 2011 in this paper, and this has to do, this next statement has to do with the swine flu that was zipping around back in, in, uh, 20, in 2009 called H1N1. It's recently been reported that diabetes triples the risk of hospitalization after H1N1 infection, and diabetes quadruples the risk of, in, of intensive care unit admission after hospitalization. So this is a risk no matter what uh, virus one is infected with. And the reason why is because, again, hyperglycemia inhibits phagocytic activity. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I've used this article's image before. Here's the article title. Here's the image. And I'm blowing up and modifying it to make it straightforward and less full of information. So. What you see here, this is a macrophage. This is the most abundant uh, remover of debris and dead cells and infected areas. So this is called the phagocytic cup. This is just how the immune cell engulfs an apoptotic cell, debris, virally infected cells. And then they eliminate them, they digest them away, and they eliminate them from the system. So what drives this? Well, free radicals, an excess of free radicals causes uh, phagocytic activity, the removal of virally infected cells to be impaired. So right here you can see this kind of line. This means inhibited, inhibited. So free radicals are going to directly inhibit phagocytosis and then indirectly inhibit phagocytosis via this substance here, which is known as an alarmin. So there are two things that happens when you become, well, there's more than two things, but for our purposes here is enough to, to get the picture. When we are hyperglycemic, we create an excess of free radicals. And the excess of free radicals not only inhibits phagocytosis and the removal of bacterial infected cells, also 
increases the release of inflammatory chemicals. So you get a double hit when you increase uh, free radicals. And we know that the most intense way or the most the strongest way that 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 cells will dump free rat will produce free radicals is through hyperglycemia. So here again now we've got the whole picture hyperglycemia increases free radicals which inhibits phagocytosis and jacks up inflammation. Exactly what we do not need if infected with SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19. So this is one way that a hyperglycemia makes COVID-19 worse. So this is how sugar feeds viral infections in general and COVID-19 in this context. There's another way. So we know from the research now that SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus, enters lung cells, which is where the, 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 the biggest issues are, right? People are on respirators and all, of, and all the rest in the hospital and ICU. So we know that the coronavirus enters lung cells through this enzyme. It's called angiotensin converting enzyme number two. So this is just my pictorial version of how to look at this. So we know that people who are lean and healthy, they have minimal to no symptoms or mild, you know, if, if, if they're unlucky and they're down for a week or maybe even less. So it gets way worse for people who are hyperglycemic and obese. So here's the reason why. When we are become hyperglycemic, we glucose, we essentially coat this enzyme with glucose. Here's what it looks like. Here's all the glucose. It's called glycosylation, sugar coating the enzyme. And a sugar coated enzyme allows for a much more intense entry of the coronavirus into lung cells. So we have this double combination. We get the hyperglycemia that reduces the ability of immune cells to get rid of virally infected cells. That same hyperglycemia causes a more intense inflammatory response from those immune cells that are not able to get rid of the viral infected cells. And that same hyperglycemia is going to increase the entry of the coronavirus into lung cells, and now we've got a big problem. In most cases, this is for people who are overtly obese, and then those who are metabolically obese but normal weight or slightly overweight. So here's what we need to understand about the uh, about COVID-19. So we know it's not a virus crisis, we know it's not a mass crisis, and we know it's not a lack of a vaccine crisis. It is an obesity hyperglycemia crisis from overeating sugar, flour, and refined oils. So it's important to understand, and this is not discussed at all in the media, they talk about obese people being at greater risk. They do not state the, the other fact that obese people are the primary COVID vector. So obese people are more prone to infections. They shed more viruses. They create more mutations with increased virulence. Everyone who's ever listened to any news, news uh, show or, or that involves scientists that come on and talk about viral mutations. The virus is mutated. Well, obese people create more mutations and they're more virulent. So obese people stay infected longer, so they're more contagious. And they, of course, breathe more heavily. You take an obese guy, have him walk, who knows, a quarter mile, he may be huffing and puffing. And so they breathe more, more regularly and more intensely just at rest. So they expire more viruses. And finally, Vaccines are less effective for obese people. Not surprisingly, direct quote from this diabetes journal in, 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 in Europe, due to prolonged viral shedding, quarantine in obese subjects should likely be longer than normal weight individuals. Have you heard that in the news? And of course, the answer is no. So this is the big issue for uh, COVID-19. So now think what happened after lockdown occurred. People gain 10, 15, 20, or more pounds. So people who were not obese are now obese and hyperglycemic. People who were obese are even more obese. So after lockdown, the doors opened, who entered society? A whole lot more COVID-19 vectors were released unknowingly because they were not told by anyone in the news or government or uh, in any of our big 
medical organizations, whether it be the American Medical Association, which is not big in the news, certainly the World Health Organization, and the CDC. So in my view, we have been failed. So if you want to take the D-flame approach to normalize your glucose, I would suggest heading over to my Amazon page. This is a, if you only get 99 cents, there's the Kindle. These are all the Kindle prices, so they're more expensive uh, for paperbacks, obviously. But the paperback for this book is about what, 13 bucks, I think. So this book is about your brain and how you can use, learn to use your brain to fight overeating these calories here. And then this book is packed full of information that explains how these calories and other similar ones are anti-inflammatory and can get your inflammatory markers, including glucose, A1C, CRP, all into the normal range. This book, this new one, is about what happens to the immune system once we flame up like this. So if you're interested in getting your immune health organized, you're overweight, this book, this book, and this book will be very helpful to you. If you want to get volumes, you can go right to dflame.com, and volume discounts are available at the dflame.com website.